There are four things I do every day, four things that I love to do every day, and I'm pretty confident that everybody here does at least two of these things every day. Eat, tweet, Instagram, and meet. I eat, tweet, Instagram, and meet with new foodies every day of the week. It's foodie chats, where the foodie community chats together. Welcome, everyone. I'm very excited to be speaking at TEDx. I'm Steve Green, founder and CEO of Foodie Chats. When they reached out to me to speak at TEDx, I was like, yeah, of course, and especially with the topic going against the flow. Because Foodie Chats, all right, food, not going against the flow. But talking about food online, OK, that's going against the flow. So very honored to be here. So Foodie Chats, it started out as a tweet, but not a normal tweet, a tweet with a hashtag attached to it. It became a every Monday night Foodie Chats Twitter chat. And in fact, tonight is Monday, and it's our 203rd straight Monday night Foodie Chats. Now it's become my entire business, and just weeks away, we are submitting to the App Store the Foodie Chat social foodie community. But first, let's take a step back for a second. 1998, I graduated college. I was a communications, film, and theater major. And about to graduate, I don't know anything about what I'm going to do. I'm really, I'm getting kind of nervous. What am I going to do? So I knew I liked to write. I liked to direct. I liked to take pictures. I liked to create videos. I liked the sales element of it all. But I really had no idea. So in December of 96, it was a little bit of my first aha moment, the movie Jerry Maguire came out. And it really touched me big time because he was that connector, that middleman between athletes and teams. And he was that person in a boutique firm trying to reach out and make a difference. So I graduate college. And at this time, 1998, right, there's no social media. There's no communities out there. It's just you actually have to go live your life. So I graduate. And I decided to take a seminar, a seminar on communities and self-expression and leadership. So you had to look at all the different communities you're in, and you had to look at all the people you know in each community. So I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at all my communities, OK? There weren't that many communities, and I didn't really know that many people. So the seminar leader, I raised my hand in the seminar. I said, this is pretty sad. I'm looking at all the communities that I'm in, and I don't really know anybody. So the seminar leader said, how about you try this on? Look at how far you've come in your life without knowing anybody. I was like, all right, that's pretty cool. I could try that one on. So from that moment on, it was aha. I became a high machine. I would say, hello, how's it going? Nice to meet you. It's great to see you. And it was incredible. My communities were just growing left and right. And again, this is now 1999. There were no social networking communities. Sure, I was on AOL Instant Messenger a little bit, which helped my tweeting skills down the road. But there wasn't any of that. So I had to go out there and expand my communities. It was great. I loved it. It changed my life. I walked here today saying hello to people, and it really creates incredible energy. So now I move to the aha moment. I have two aha moments to share for you, which really changed my life. So the second aha moment is, wow, is when, you know, we speed forward now 10 years later, okay? We're in about 2009, and this is where social networks were totally taking off, okay? Everybody's on Facebook, everybody's tweeting now, or maybe everybody's starting to tweet a little bit. You're on LinkedIn. So I would continuously share about business on social media. Crickets. Nobody would respond, nobody would like. I'm sure we've all had that out there. So one day, a friend of mine and I decided to do a challenge. It was a 30-30-30 challenge. It was 30 days, 30 vlogs, 30 different stories. So my first nine vlogs, I went out, I did a story, and I ended it with a statement. So I got no comments and no likes. I'm like, all right, this is not that fun. So the 10th vlog I did happened to be National Hot Dog Day, OK? Being born and raised in Chicago, I'm a huge hot dog fan. Of course, no ketchup on our hot dogs. And for this particular vlog, I ended it with a question. I asked people, what do you like on your hot dogs? Because now, here we go. We've got social media now, so we could ask the question to a broad audience. And everybody started commenting back, this is great. So for the next couple of years, I continually, because I mean, I've been a foodie my whole life. And I continuously asked questions about food. And people shared and commented, and it was great. So now comes the biggest aha moment of my life. It was Monday, May 11th, 8.52 p.m. Eastern Time. And I asked, what's everybody having for dinner tonight? But this tweet was different. 
this tweet had the hashtag foodie chats attached to the tweet. And 10 people answered. I'm like, all right, this is great. So I did another tweet with the hashtag foodie chats. 20 people answered. I did another one, 50 people, another one, 100. The next one, 500 people. It was crazy. And I'll lot Jimmy Fallon, OK? We became an instant trending topic in 20 minutes, like he always says. We did become a worldwide trending topic. It was incredible. So at 2 in the morning, literally five hours into just nonstop tweeting, somebody said, is Foodie Chats every Monday night? I said, sure, why not? And then voila, Foodie Chats happened. So quickly, weeks into doing Foodie Chats, my friends kept saying, how are you going to monetize it? How are you going to monetize it? And a la Aaron Rodgers, I said, relax. Relax, everybody. Let's just have fun with this right now. It was incredible because of building online and live social communities. It started off back in 99 where I'm saying hello and I'm actually going out to events, presentations, meeting people. And now we're here in 2011 and you have the entire internet to work with. So this was a great opportunity to really reach a broader audience. So to build an online and live community, I, I have a thing called the four C's. Content, channel scheduling, communication, and consistency. So the first one is content. So absolutely, you have to have a passion about what you're talking about. You have to love what you're sharing because it makes your life a lot easier. So for me, my passion of sharing about food makes things easy. There's so many opportunities, obviously, to just have a status, to have a photo, to have a video. There's so many great opportunities. When your community trusts in you and have confidence in what you're speaking about, it opens up the opportunities. There's so many things you can talk about. The second one is channel scheduling. So we're building online and live social communities. Channel scheduling to me is everything, okay? So you look at all your channels. And because we're talking online and live, look at all of them. So you're online. So you have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can continue on. Your live communities, you have meetings. You have presentations, and you have lunches, dinners. You have so many things. So now look at all the channels. Every channel you want, write it down. Every channel you want to work on. Now, for me, Foodie Chats is my full-time job. So look at how many hours you have in a week to allot to all of your channels. Now look at each channel. How many hours or minutes are you going to spend on each channel? So if you have Twitter, an hour a week, two hours a week, but knowing your objective, what's your objective when you're logging into each channel? What hat do you have on when you want to log into that channel? So you want to know who you want to speak to, what you want to speak about. It's a very key way to stay organized because, because as we know, you can get lost in Facebook. You can get lost in all social media platforms. But if you're very targeted to what you're talking about, you know what you can do. The third one is communication. To me, which is everything. You've got your content. You've got all your channels. Now you're ready to share it and broadcast it to everybody. So to me, you want to do a little formula of social media growth, marketing, and engagement. And it's really important because if you're speaking the same message to the same audience all the time, you might be losing your audience a little bit. So you have to continue to grow it, follow new people, reach out to new people. Now when it comes to marketing and engagement, you want a healthy balance between both. You don't want to just market all the time. So when it comes to food, and not everybody here is creating a, a foodie community, but food's everything. It's always great to bond over a meal or bond over a drink. It, it creates the ultimate bond. So you, you want to make sure that you have a healthy balance. When it comes to food, it's easy, obviously. You can comment that you love somebody's dish or how did you make that. Or just the other night, I shared a bunch of tricolored peppers on my Instagram, and I asked people, what would you do with your peppers? And everybody responded back. So it was great. Of Asking those questions is such a great way to open up your community. And the last one, the fourth C, the last fourth C is consistency. Every single day. Your community trusts in seeing what you're up to every day. It's such an important aspect to building it. And uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me turn my phone off real quick. Hello? Somebody? The, the fifth C? The fifth C is calling right now? Who? Who's creativity? Well, hello, creativity. Everybody, say hello to creativity. I mean, come on, really. Say hello to creativity. All right, we got to go. I'm in the middle of this TEDx talk. Sorry. So creativity, that to me is everything because you can have all the inspiration in the world. And if you don't have energy or creativity, it's hard to always keep that inspiration alive. But if you always have energy 
then you can always live your inspiration because when you love something and you have the energy, you always want to be a part of it and you always want to share it. So it's a lot of fun ways that you can continually keep your community alive and going because, hey, you know, things are tough and it's tough. But when you say hi to people all the time, going back to saying hi, it really opens up doors and creates that community. And now with the internet, you can say hi to people all over the country, all over the world, and it's such an exciting thing. And one of the biggest things for Foodie Chats is every Monday night, tonight, 203rd straight Monday night Foodie Chats. It's crazy. People count on it every night now, and it's so great to see the tweets from people saying, hey, Mondays, you've changed Mondays, and, and it makes my life a lot more fun to share with it and create a community. So now, from taking a little hashtag to a Twitter chat to the business model, to in just a few short weeks starting a social foodie community, it's incredible bringing people together with your passion because if you're really passionate about what you do, you just love what you do all the time. And, you know, sure, going against the flow is a hashtag to a Twitter chat to making that happen, but food is very much with the flow. So sometimes it's great to bring things together that are against the flow and with the flow and bring them together. So I want to thank everybody so much. Hashtag foodie chats. Thank you.